I'm telling y'all what, I'm so excited to take this bike right now. Like, seriously, like, excited. Oh, damn. I keep it. What's up, y'all? Dano here, back in the Dane kitchen. Check it out. We got some mayonnaise. We're going to turn this into the best aioli you ever had. And it's actually, we're going to call it Danoli because we're going to put some Danos in it, too. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take our garlic here and we're going to roast it for about 45 minutes in the oven. So, first thing, we're going to take our garlic cloves and we're just going to kind of cut the top off like that. And we'll do it again. Then we also got us a uh, ghost pepper and we're going to throw that in the foil as well to roast it. Man, that's tough. That's a tough clove of garlic right there. We're going to take this garlic, we're going to set it right in the foil just like so with our little ghost pepper in there and we're just going to wrap it up in the foil. We're going to throw it in the oven for about 45 minutes and then we'll make our danoli. So we got our garlic ready, it's been roasted. We left it in there a little bit too long, but that'll be all right. But you can see after this garlic's been roasted, I mean, heck, we can almost just kind of squeeze it and like our garlic just kind of pops out. But that's some roasted garlic and we'll just get some of that. We'll just squeeze some of that in there. Just squeeze that out, pop it right in there. I'm wearing the gloves because the garlic's so sticky. And look at this little ghost pepper. I'm not touching that thing with my bare hand. Choose my weapon here and just use this little fillet knife. This is actually like a fish fillet knife. And I'll just get some tiny little cuts on this. Even though it's going in this little blender, you definitely wanna focus on cutting it up pretty small. So we'll just throw this in here. Then we'll add our mayonnaise. Like I said, it's about a cup and a half of mayonnaise. I don't know about you all, but everybody, there's, you know, people like to talk about the best mayonnaises. My absolute favorite mayonnaise in the world is Duke's. Love it. Can't beat it. Spicy Danos. So we're gonna pop the top. We're gonna give it a couple good squeezes. We call that the trigger finger. That's just a bunch of flavor we're adding in there. You know what's funny? I'll tell you this. I'll tell you what's funny. Is I actually forgot to put the blade in there. So now I gotta go find my blade because there's no blade in there and I gotta put the blade in so we can blend it. So let me get that. Found it. So now we're just gonna pop it in there, put our lid on, and let's blend it. You wanna hear that Dano two stroke? Yum, 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 yum. I don't know, you gotta have fun in the kitchen. Look at that. Kinda turned watery. I actually don't know why I did that. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. So I'll be real honest with you. It's supposed to be thicker than that. I don't know why it's so watery. I mean, it wasn't like it was a ton of garlic that like would have made it watery like that. It has to do something with that mayonnaise, which actually it wasn't Dukes. I just wanted to tell you it was Dukes because they were out of Dukes, so I had to buy some knockoff mayonnaise and I think that's what made it watery. But anytime it's watery like that, we're still gonna roll with it because it's still gonna be awesome when we drizzle, drizzle it over the cabbage on our tuna steak sandwich we're getting ready to make. But if it's watery, guess what? You take these dried herbs and spices and we'll put a bunch more in there. And that'll actually help to thicken it up a little bit. We're gonna roll with that. I mean, I don't know why it's watery. It thickened up a little bit. We put a little bit more Danos in it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this in the fridge. I'm gonna make a tuna steak sandwich, put some cabbage on it and drizzle this over the top. And it's gonna be awesome because the flavor in here is amazing. Back in the Dan kitchen, we're getting ready to make one of my absolute favorite things. When I used to work at Chili's, when I was like 20 years old in Lexington, Kentucky, they had this blackened uh, tuna steak sandwich that was amazing. But today, we're gonna use the Danoli. It's like a garlic aioli, but we're calling it Danoli because there's Danos in it. 
So what I want to show you is how easy it is to blacken some tuna steaks and make this sandwich. So we got some awesome buns here. We made this aioli earlier and we're not sure why it split up when we blended it. So what we're going to do is we'll add a little mayonnaise to it and try to thicken it up a little bit. But that's what we're going to use as our sauce. It may look like it's not good, but we tasted it and it's amazing. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to fire up. You don't want to get it preheated to where it's piping hot. You really, if you're on a stove top, you want it maybe just slightly above medium temperature. Let's go on and cut these tuna steaks. You can see how big these buns are. If we put one of those on those buns, it's just way too big. So we can cut each one of these in half, just like so. Look at that. All you have to do is grab the spicy Danos toothpick. Would you mind to hand me that spicy Danos over there? Appreciate it. So we got our spicy Danos. If you're familiar with Danos, there's a green cap, which is, is the original, and then there's the red cap, and this is the spicy one. I'm always using the spicy because I like things with a little bite. The cool thing about spicy Danos is it's never going to be too hot, and it's not going to set you on fire. This here is the green. That's the original recipe. Came up with it on chicken, but it's good on anything and everything you want to put it on. So we're going to blacken these up using spicy Danos, and you'll notice when I use it, I use a lot of it because it's not overpowered with salt like most seasonings on the market. It's the right amount of salt and we use real sea salt so you still get that good salt flavor. We're heated up here. I'm going to turn this down. This is a cooking oil. This is an olive oil canola blend. It's got a higher uh, smoke rate so or smoke temperature. This is the easy part my friends. This is all you got to do to make this awesome black and tuna steak. We're going to grab the Danos. We call this the trigger finger. That's the pop pop. I'm just gonna squeeze it on there, get a good coating. That's what's gonna give us the herb crust. And we're just gonna put it right in, just like this. Literally, we're gonna let it cook for about two and a half minutes on each side. We're gonna try and keep a little bit of pink on the inside. And that's seriously all you gotta do. Grab the Danos, spicy Danos, and we're just gonna hit it on the other side. Now all you gotta do is just let it cook. Super easy, guys. So we're gonna take this. This is Napa cabbage. We're just gonna slice it really thin. Just like so. After you try this, make sure you leave a comment. If you don't know what all the Danos, I don't know what you're waiting for, because I'm telling you, this is gonna be amazing. But make sure you leave a comment because you're going to want to try this if you got a bottle of Danos and you can leave a comment and thank me later. So we'll just give this a couple good little chops and that's ready to go. We're just going to flip it right over. Look at that perfect herb crust sear. Perfect. Maybe the sear could have been a little bit better so I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. Here's what we're gonna do next. When we made this aioli, you can see with those mayonnaise, some roasted garlic, a ghost pepper, and some spicy danos. And for some reason, when we blended it, it broke up like this, and we have no clue why. But maybe it was this mustard, this mayonnaise, but I don't think that's the case. But we're just gonna add a little bit of mayonnaise to it and kind of thicken it up a little bit. We're gonna mix this up. As you see, that mayonnaise will kind of Thicken it up a little bit. Kind of got some little chunks in there. It'll be all right though. We don't want to overcook these. I know they're almost there already. So literally what we're going to do, we're going to go on and turn the heat off. We're going to take us a little bit of this and put it on our bottom bun. May look a little off because we don't know what happened, but this is going to be amazing. I promise you the flavor is there. Check that out. How good does that look? Check this out, it's so easy. We're just gonna put a pile of cabbage, right? As much as you can get to sit on there, just like that. Then we're gonna take our aioli. And we're gonna drizzle a bunch of it right up the top.
may get a little messy, but trust me, this is gonna be amazing. Oh, righty. I hope y'all are as excited as I am. I kind of almost halfway have to apologize to you because I know what's going on in your head right now. You wish that you could have a bite of this, but the reality is that you can do this so easy. I literally made these in a matter of minutes. Now, let's get us one. Check that out. Still got a little bit of pink in there. Got that cabbage, got all that flavor that aioli. I'm telling you what, I'm so excited to take this bite right now. Like, seriously. Like, excited. Like, 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 seriously? That's one of the best things I've ever made. I don't know what to say. If you're not liking, commenting, subscribing to this, oh my goodness, go. I mean, I don't, I'm almost speechless. I love you. I do this because I love you. I created something awesome. I had to share it with the world. That's why I do this, because I love you. Wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. If you don't have a bottle, get you one. Make this recipe. Holler at your boy. I'm telling you what, you cannot beat this. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you soon. Keep more recipes coming all day long. Mmm. Oh damn. I keep it. Oh damn. That thing good.